This video is going to show how to install daytime running lights on a 2016 Ram Promaster van that was not equipped with daytime running lights to begin with. If you look at the area circled, you can see there is a place for the daytime running lights. There's just nothing there. Uh, there is no ball present. The goal behind this project is to retrofit some LEDs in that location. And while I'm at it, I'll make the LEDs amber instead of white. The first step in this project is to see if the van is capable of daytime running lights and uh, that that involves removing the headlight assembly to check to see if the wiring is present and these are the tools needed to accomplish that task they are as follows a plastic pry bar a standard phillips screwdriver and a 10 millimeter socket okay let's get started on this uh, the first thing you have to do is remove the headlight itself uh, there's all kinds of videos out there on the net on how to do this, so I will not go into too much great detail. Once you have the uh, trim pieces and all the bolts removed, it's just a matter of disconnecting the wiring harness. Uh, there's a little tab on top of the connector there. You just push that down and pull back and you're done. Now we're going to see if the van is wired for the daytime running lights. If you look at the lower right hand corner of the connector, you'll see a little silver thing there. That means there is a pin in that location. It means that we are good to go. Let's see if we have any voltage present on those pins. Uh, we'll take a meter and hook up the hot lead to pin 8 and the ground lead to pin 5. Let's turn the van on now and see if we have any voltage on those pins. Uh, if we don't, it probably just means that the daytime running lights are not enabled. With the Alpha OBD app and a scan tool, we can enable the daytime running lights, which we will get into more detail later in this video. This ancient looking instrument is called a volt ohm meter. It uh, was the workhorse back in the day, and it's easy to see whether you have voltage or not. You just watch the needle. You don't have to worry about reading numbers. What I'm doing here is just turning the van on and off, uh, turning the fog lights on and off, and watching how the needle reacts. And basically what it says is we have voltage to that pin 8. Okay, now that we know we have the voltage necessary to run the LEDs, we're going to talk about where we're going to put them. There is a blank casting in the headlight assembly, which I'm going to point out with the screwdriver right there. And what we're going to do is drill a hole and mount the LEDs in that location. Here's the LED assembly that I'm going to be using. Uh, basically, it consists of three little LED chips on that flower looking object a lens, a holder that also acts as a heat sink, a voltage converter that converts the 12 volts to the voltage that the LED can use, and some pins so that I can utilize the OEM connector for the headlights. I will have a complete parts list on the description of the video along with uh, my website at electronics.com. Here's a closer look at the uh, complete LED assembly. These pictures uh, just show how the individual components go together. And there you have it. Okay, let's plug them in and see if they work. Uh, as I stated before, the uh, hot lead goes to pin 8. The ground lead goes to pin 
5 and that's the case on both sides. Uh, one thing I'm, I've not gone into yet is enabling the, the DRLs with the OBD app which I have done and now we're going to just turn the van on and the light should come on and they do and they are very bright both sides work and uh, just a matter of mounting them in the lens now I was curious as to how hot the LEDs would get so I, I left them on for about five minutes and uh, then checked them with the digital thermometer here and as you can see 133 that that's probably about the same temperature that a conventional light bulb would get so I'm not concerned this is the scary part drilling the hole in the lens uh, chose a one inch Forstner bit which is going to give me the hole I need to mount the LED and uh, here we go point of no return And it's done. Just have to remove the slug with some needle nose pliers. Uh, also got quite a bit of dust inside the lens from the drilling operation, but with the air hose and a shop vac, I was able to get rid of most of it. I had to come up with a way of mounting the LED holder into the lens itself, and what I decided on doing was uh, gluing it in with some high temperature. RTV. Uh, the first thing I had to do was make a, a mounting ring for the LED holder itself and I did that by drilling out a fender washer with a carbide tipped hole saw as you can see in in the picture above. The next step was to drill a couple holes in a board to uh, be able to hold the ring in place so which would allow me to glue it up with some uh, JB weld and uh, then I could release them from the board real easy and clean them up and I had a mounting surface. As I said I plan to use some high temp silicone rubber to hold the assembly in the lens so I uh, mounted the the lights in a way that would allow me to just drop the uh, the assembly in and it would stay in place and and not move around and be nice and level I placed a liberal amount of RTV on the uh, the LED holder itself and uh, also around the mounting hole in the lens picture's a little shaky because it's hard to do this with one hand on the camera and applying with the other hand but uh, I got it done as I said I put uh, plenty of silicone around the hole and on the LED holder itself and this is what it looked like when it was all finally assembled Now it's time to wire things up. A quarter turn on the connector allows it to be pushed in and then routed out through the big hole so that you have access to the back side of the connector itself. We have a new pin for the hot lead that goes into pin number eight and then we will splice into the existing wires that go to pin number five for the ground. got the pins through mauser.com and I'll have a part number in the description of the video. You are supposed to use a special crimp tool to attach the uh, wire to the terminal but I found that solder works just as well. Next we'll uh, attach the ground lead for the LED. Uh, I very carefully strip back one of the ground wires that goes to pin 5 and wrap the LED wire around it and soldered it and then covered it with some tape. I 
All that remains is to put the hot lead into position eight and make sure that it's seated properly. You will hear it click when it's all the way in. Now we'll put the connector back in this mounting hole. It'll only go one way. There is a narrow tab and a wide tab on the outer ring of the connector to uh, line up with the slots in the housing. You'll notice our new pin shining brightly at the right hand side of the connector. Now it's just a matter of giving the connector a quarter turn counterclockwise to lock it in place. And now we put the cover back on. Slight turn, it locks it in. And we're good to put the whole assembly back in the van. Plug the wiring harness into the back of the assembly and uh, you will hear it click. The rest of the install is just the opposite of the removal, so I won't go into too much detail here. This video is running a little long, so I won't go into too much detail either about the Alpha OBD. Uh, if you look on my website, electronics.com, you will find a couple of videos on the tire pressure sensor monitor and the fog light install, and they go into pretty good detail about how to hook up with Alpha OBD to change the settings in the body computer. That being said, I will go through the steps necessary to enable the, the daytime running lights. You have to choose the van as a RAM ProMaster, and then you want to go to the body computer, and the control unit will be your only choice, and then you hit the connect button. Uh, it will come up with a warning asking you about the yellow cable. You say that's okay. Now, once you're connected, you go into, down at the bottom, the car configuration change. And the options that you want under that first is the daytime running light, DRL, absent, present. And the value you want here is enabled. Once you choose that, you'll hit the start button and go through the steps necessary, and it'll tell you that that was successful. The next thing you have to do is change the daytime running light type to LEDs. And if you scroll down, you will find what you're looking for, and it's called the DRL type. You choose that, you select the value of enabled, LEDs and hit the start button and you are done. And here is the finished product. Not too bright in amber. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Uh, you can find more videos concerning the ProMaster at my website electronics.com. If you have any questions, uh, go through the forum for now and uh, I, will, I will get back to you as soon as I can. I hope to get a dedicated email address set up soon.